Right, so she, here she is, the Hypolo RS, um, relatively finished. Um, the delay on this build, um, I have been flying it, but the delay of showing the build video is I had to get one of the Emacs motors replaced because I had a dodgy one, so that's just delayed things slightly. Um, but as you can see, sweet little frame. Uh, mine's somewhat dusty um, because I took it for a quick test fly um, following my issues with the motors. Um, and these ones all seem to be absolutely fine. So yeah, so it's all finished So what I'll do now is I'll take the top plate off and let's have a look at what's inside So there we are. So with the top plate off you can see it's a relatively clean and easy um, build So at the front we've got the Cadex SDR1 uh, micro camera We've got uh, FreeSky XM Plus receiver We've got a Matic F411 Mini flight controller. Beneath that we've got the 40 amp HG LRC Dyno Shot uh, BL Heli 32 ESC and on the back we've got a TBS Unify High Voltage Pro um, temporarily with an Emacs Pagoda antenna and I'll touch on that a little bit later and obviously the motors we've got Emacs 2306 um, 2400 kV so the whole purpose of this build for me was that I've been flying my Hyperlos CGs and the Vert Freestyle and when this, um, when I saw this frame um, I really liked the fact that it was a combination between a race frame and a freestyle frame and it could relatively easily carry a GoPro um, and I thought it was a really sort of nice hybrid um, frame design and because this frame comes with, uh, or you can get it as a four inch or a five inch, my idea all along was to have a frame that I could swap between five and four inch. So I needed to build it in such a way that the components would work on either length arm. Um, and I could just basically switch out the, the motors and the arms. So basically that sort of formulated the build for me. Um, I chose the Emacs 2306 because they're pretty lightweight motors and they've just been released when I um, received mine. And I chose 2400 kV simply because I wanted this quad to be relatively efficient. And because I was using the 20 by 20 um, 40 amp ESC, I didn't really have any faith in that ESC's capabilities. So I didn't want a motor, a high kV motor with tons of amps um, putting it under any great stress. Um, the Emacs motors I've been a little bit disappointed with. Um, of the four that I had, one um, was basically toast pretty much from the box um, and the other three, um, one had a few bits of metal inside and they've all, all of the three were sort of covered on the outside of the bell um, in kind of, well you can't see it because it's dusty, in kind of blue, you can see it here blue um, balancing gunk um, to the point that when I first got the motors um, you couldn't actually spin them because the balancing gunk on the bell lip was hitting the wires themselves um, and of course all, all motors have balancing gunk on them but I've never seen it put on the outer bell um, it's usually inside um, so I was a little bit disappointed in that and you really had to force these wires down to be able to get the bells to um, to spin. However, the replacements that I got, they've changed the colour to black of the balancing gunk, so it looks a lot nicer. Um, and there's a lot less of it on the outer um, bell, so it looks like they've already sort of taken steps to sort that out. Um, so I was tempted to do a, a, a review saying, you know, what's going on here, but instead of just vented at Emacs um, and in fairness to them um, Emacs have taken on board what I've said and I had no issues getting replacement motor um, so it looks like they're you know they're, they're listening to feedback and sorting it out although when you're releasing a much hyped motor I think those things should have been sorted out prior to uh, sending them to your local hobby shops um, so yeah so the motors themselves um, are pretty smooth um, the power isn't massive um, it's certainly a lot less than the F60 that I usually fly however I wasn't after all out power because of this um, pretty lightweight frame um, and the good thing about these motors 
in comparison to a lot of 23 or 6s um, is that the, the power delivery is relatively linear so they don't have sort of a, a, a bottom and grunt and then fade away the the, the throttle um, response is pretty good all the way to the top end so they are nice motors um, if you get ones that uh, that actually actually work um, in terms of the other components there's not a huge amount to say the Matek F411 is just a simple little 20 by 20 um, flight controller I chose this particular little guy because it has um, unlike most of these uh, mini flight controllers it has actual pads that you can solder your signal wires onto rather than a connector and the HG LRC, you won't be able to see this and I'm not taking it apart because it's a faff, but the HG LRC uh, Dynashot 40 amp ESC is the, is the ESC that comes in the F440 stack. And this ESC, despite being 20 by 20, is rated um, to 40 amps continuous and 50 or possibly 45 amps burst. And it was rated for 5S, although I noticed that they've changed a lot of their literature and it now states 4s but the long and the short of this ESC is there's no way on God's earth that this will cope with 160 amps constant um, current and it isn't going to cope with you know 200 amps burst um, unless HGLRC have done something incredible um, it's, it's just not possible if you compare it to you know the size of a proper sort of four-in-one ESC um, you know kind of like that this thing's got heft and weight and the amount of capacitors etc on it whereas the HGLRC weighs five grams and has got very little on it so <laughs> I'm not sort of recommending anybody run out and, and duplicate this build um, I suspect on these motors and this build I'm hoping that the ESC will be okay but if you if you ask for too much, I suspect it will either fry or just have a really short life. Um, having said that, because it only weighs five and a half grams, it's a good, you know, five, ten, fifteen grams lighter than any other, um, you know, thirty point five mil um, four in one ESC. Um, the TBS Unify shouldn't actually be in here. When I first built this, I installed um, the AKK FX three. I think it is. This is a twenty by twenty. Um, smart audio um, up to 600 milliwatts um, of power VTX with a nice MMCX connector and that's what I wanted to run A because it's really light and fit in, it fit lovely um, in the back of the of the quad and B because it's got this um, really nice M MMCX connector on um, however when I first built it I mentioned in the notes when I was test flying it that I had a bit of video noise and that noise got um, steadily worse so I've been faffing around um, trying different wiring and installing dis different capacitors both on the side and on the, the 5 volt rails etc um, and I wasn't getting anywhere so in the end I powered the VTX um, via I took it off and powered it via a separate battery and I still had the same issue so basically this VTX is, um, is toast and thinking back um, I found this in my drawer. I think this is um, from one of my three inches, which actually ended up upside down in a deep puddle. Um, so it's probably not AKK's fault. Um, but that left me with um, basically sticking the TBS in. And because I don't use this guy very often, I didn't have any um, any pigtails. So at the moment, I've just bodged together this right -ang angle pigtail with this antenna. But all I'm going to do. Um, in the not too distant future is just buy the um, UFL version of the Foxy L Lollipop which is this guy because these guys um, I think they're about 15 quid for two so they're pretty cheap um, and unlike a lot of these little antennas this one's actually survived um, quite a lot of, um, of beating so that will also sort of lighten it up because right now this connector's probably adding on about another you know 10 grams or so in, in weight so if we just flip away a second and I'll show you what it actually weighs right so it's weight with the GoPro ramp and all the bolts and screws and whatever is 287 grams probably can't even see that get these out of the way yeah 287 grams um, and remember that's including three got three um, lipo straps 
and a 3D printed um, GoPro ramp. If you compare that 287 grams to my Hyperlow CG, which has got props on, but again got the GoPro ramp and three battery steps, this comes in at 417 grams. So a knock off 20 grams for props and you're looking at a weight of you know 395 400 grams so there's a hell of a difference between the weight of this guy and its full-scale freestyle brother and that those weight savings come from everywhere the frame itself is much lighter um, obviously the camera is lighter um, the stack is lighter um, the motors are a lot lighter and of course the only bit that's um, probably heavier actually is um, is the actual VTX itself so in terms of this frame I've got to say I absolutely love it um, and the reason I love it so much is everything just fits perfectly um, this was a really sort of straightforward build the only tricky part and I forgot to mention this is the HG LRC um, 40 amp dyno shots comes with a plug connector in the center of it which you should use to plug in um, its corresponding um, flight controller um, however all I've done is because I didn't want to use that flight controller and I don't like the, the plug itself it limits um, soft mounting all I've done is basically bent the wires the pins out on the actual on the actual plug itself and then soldered um, the four motor um, wire signal signals um, signal wires sorry to the um, to the pins and then back to the flight controller um, and i link in the description below um, a video from um, another channel <clears throat> where i first saw this done actually um, and, and you can watch the video if you if you're curious about how it's done but it works really well i haven't had any issues and then all i did is basically just use some liquid electrical tape just to uh, protect those connections a little bit so yeah so in terms of the frame itself um what do i think about it and where does it sit i think it hits the nail pretty much on the head in terms of what richard wanted for it as in it's light enough to race with but it's also perfectly able to carry Uh, session. So if I just stick it back together again in a second. So this mount up here, the whole thing is basically millimetre perfect in terms of how everything sort of fits together. Um, so there's no kind of wasted space. So while it is a tight frame, you don't really lose anything that you would have on a normal bigger five inch freestyle rig like the CG. So if I get my GoPro session, so that kind of sits in there up front like that. Obviously you strap it in like so. And then your battery Need to be a little bit careful of you don't want one of those ridiculously long batteries this is um china hobby line mini star 1500 120c so if you stick your battery in and kind of wedge it up behind you will see when i strap it in just push it up It's basically spot on the back where it needs to um, where it needs to be. And in case you're wondering, your props aren't anywhere near the battery either way. So there's no issues there. So yeah, so I think I think all in all, it's a really, really good little frame. Um, and if you kind of do a bit of racing, but you like to freestyle as well, um, it's a really good way to have one frame that does a couple of different things. 
um, and stick the four inch arms on um, and you've got a different build altogether. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to um, I flash this to Betaflight 3.4 um, I'm going to continue my trials and tribulations um, of getting 3.4 to run as well as 3.33 um, and once I've got this tuned up and running as I want it to do what I'll probably do is cut short the motor wires and then if I can find one I will use race wire to basically just sit on the arm. The race wire itself is a little bit wider than the arm but it's no biggie. I'll just put race wire onto the arm and then I can take the four inch arms with whatever smaller motors etc I decide to use and just swap the arms by desoldering um, this connection here. And because I'm using a 20 by 20 stack, I can undo these bolts without disturbing anything inside. So yeah, so I'm really chuffed with it actually. Um, in the air, um, obviously I could only really fly it with the, with the motor which was really rough, which I had to replace. Um, it feels really nimble and really agile. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, as I said, get it tuned up, get it flying, get it set up the way I want it to. Um, and then I'll then I'll start doing the same with the four inch version, and I might do a bit of an update video on that one. So yeah, I hope that was useful. Um, any questions, obviously, let me know. But in terms of the actual frame, I think it's um, I think it's a corker. I really like it, um, and I've had a lot of fun flying it, even with the uh, with the dodgy motor. So cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye bye.